Bruce Lawn. All right. Right when I thought that Carl Lentz could ride out into the sunset and move on with his life, there seems to be another uptake in this entire saga known as Hillsong Church, specifically Hillsong NYC. And gosh, it is messy. I got a question for you guys in terms of how all of this looks. Is this something that's going to be able to be prevented moving in the future? Is this something that is being intentionally done? It's it's a hot mess. So docu-series called Hillsong, a mega church exposed. Okay, now, Hillsong NYC is where Lentz is out of, and he had a, a breakdown, an entire uh, affair and a half or five months, just, just living a double life. Initially, I was very partial to Carl because I just enjoyed some of the stuff they did, and then as you peeled away at the layer, it was like, holy moly, this is a mess, this is unchecked power. It's bad. So, I'm going to play this, and then I have two questions for you guys at the end. And two passages. I'll tell you guys the trailer. I'll pause a little bit, give you guys my thoughts, and uh, and then give you guys two passages and two questions for you at the very end. Hillsong is the celebrity church, right? Bieber, Bono, Vanessa Hudgens, Kevin Durant. It wasn't just this Australian startup anymore. It was Justin Bieber's church. Now that is the image that Rogan roasted Carl Lentz addressing his D-word root right here, right? And how ridiculous he looked as a pastor and how, he, you know, Rogan called it early. And a lot of Christians were like, ah, you don't understand. He's the cool pastor. And I'm going to talk about cool here in a second, all right? But that was the original picture. This is, this is Lentz and Bieber. They've had over 3 billion views on YouTube. The song changed. 3 billion views on YouTube. For context, my buddy, The Professor, who's a legendary street ball player and won 5 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. He's been on my YouTube channel before. The Professor just cracked 1 billion views on YouTube. Apparently, they did 3 billion views on YouTube. That's a lot. That many of us saw how church could be done. They're huge now. They're huge. You can make a real church. There's definitely got some Twilight Bombshell music going behind it. Yes. Change if you come to Hillsong. This is going to be a place where I could call my home. But that clearly wasn't the case, and it almost took my life. You can run wow. For a long time, run for a long time. When we talk about Carl and purity, how could you shame me when I was so young, but you did this? I'm assuming she was in his youth group. This is... Mm. It was the most toxic thing I ever had to deal with. Uh, hey, girl. And, and that's the woman with the, the thing that he did with footage of him to her. No. No. Why, Carl? Sooner or later, God will put you down. The beliefs that they put in you go deep. They really get in your head. This is cool, church. This is cool, church. I'm going to talk about that in a second, all right? There is a fine line between cult and culture. That's a bar. There's a fine line between cult and culture. They want to spread their tentacles as far as they can. They really do believe. They want to spread their tentacles as far as, like, an octopus? Weird. That they need to conquer Earth in order to make heaven on Earth. They feel they need to conquer Earth in order to have heaven on Earth. To essentially bring on the end times. Now, that is a post-millennial position on, on eschatology, the end times, that some hyper charismatic groups have. I don't know if Hillsong believes that, meaning they're expecting a huge revival and to win back the world and then usher in the second coming of Jesus. It's not just charismatics, but uh, th that is a position that uh, some charismatic churches have. I think Bethel kind of leans in the same way. So I didn't know this about Hillsong in terms of their theology, whereas like a lot of folks are waiting for the doom and gloom in the evangelical church, some charismatics have a we need to take back the world view. And and there's like a, a, a I think seven mandates type of theology that some groups have. This is not a moral failure. It's a felonious criminal act. Seventy eight million dollars in revenue tax free manipulation. There's always going to be that little jab at the church for tax free and religious trauma, systemic cover up, tremendous power. Everything in your life is Hillsong. This is not what I thought it was. Couple questions for you guys. Question number one is, at this point, does someone just have an ax to grind on this story? 
because there's stuff that came out recently with Brian Houston having to step down and that whole bit. Is this a calculated effort to kind of continue beating a dead horse with this is now over two years ago? Or th does this story need to be told? That's my first question for you guys in the comment section. Because I get it, and I think this was a mess, but now there's a multi-part docuseries coming out about this, which just looks bad. Uh, it, it just looks bad. So it seems like, from one standpoint, there is an ax to grind here. That's my. That would be my first question to you guys. The second question I have is, will stuff like this getting repeatedly exposed change what it is that we desire in our leaders, change what it is that we desire in our churches, change what it is that maybe even the makeup of the evangelical Western concept of church. It, could this be a good thing? That's my second question. I've read this passage over and over on this channel, and I really do feel like it is a mandate, no pun intended, for uh, followers of Jesus and leaders, like, and Christian leaders, right? First Thessalonians 4, verse 11 through 12. I'm in the NIV right now. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business, work with your own hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and, that's, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. This type of thing repeatedly coming out, can it publicly make a shift in the type of churches we're willing to participate? Will this disrupt the mega church model? Clearly, it's already disrupting the model of Hillsong. And this isn't just a dunk on Hillsong, but it's already disrupting that and who's getting platformed in that whole bit, right? And so what this passage is saying, hey, our ambition, there's nothing wrong with ambition, but make your ambition to lead a quiet life, mind your own business, work with your own hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life, who you are behind the scenes, who you are when no one's looking, may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. I think that's a great benchmark for a lot of us, but especially those of us in ministry. Now, what many people get confused is then they say, well, then any type of acclaim, any type of success, any type of quote unquote cool is bad and should be suppressed and anything with regarding to art, media, culture is, is bad, right? That's the other extreme people go on. But I don't think that in and of itself is the issue. Like, I don't think Hillsong fell apart in New York because they were cool. I think there was other issues and they misprioritized what they had and therefore it fell apart, if that's making sense. So I wanna read another passage to you guys. This is Matthew chapter six, and I have a point here, but Matthew chapter six, verse 25, hopefully you're familiar with this passage. If you're not, I really do recommend you read Matthew chapter six, it's fire. Jesus is speaking and says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Uh, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles sink after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them, but here's the redirection. Here's the redirection. So he's saying, don't be anxious. Don't be worried about these things, right? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So Jesus is saying, listen, don't be consumed with the day-to-day -day needs that you may have as a human. God knows you need to eat. God knows you need clothes. God knows all these things, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and let all these things be added onto you. And so I don't think the issue is hype beast clothes or sneakers or nice jackets, leather jackets, or, or, or any of the external things. I think the issue is a misprioritization on those things. This is what I'm getting at. If you're reading and living 1 Thessalonians 4, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, mind your business, work with your own hands, just as we told you. If that's the, if that's the objective and success comes as a byproduct of that, success comes as a byproduct of your faithfulness because you are seeking to live God's ways, you're seeking the kingdom first, right? And then these things will be added onto you instead of seeking those things without having a kingdom mentality, right? So I think even that, like, it was the cool church, 
I don't think that co- being cool is something you should intentionally strive for or like uh, uh, aspire for. Like it's a weird thing. I think if you are who you are and you like, I don't know, nice shoes or whatever, and then it becomes a byproduct of who you are, that's different than seeking out celebrity. I'm not sure if this is making sense. Don't seek out to be famous. Don't seek out rich, richest for the sake of being riches. Don't seek out things for the sake of those things in and of itself. Seek out to be effective. Seek out to be faithful. And if success comes as a byproduct, then so be it. But be concerned more about your daily life. Your daily life should win the respect of outsiders. Not who you are on a platform, not who you are on a stage. And so my question to you guys is, do you think that these things consistently coming out multiple times, this isn't the first time, unfortunately it won't be the last time, now there's docuseries being made about it, do you guys think that these things will shift Western church culture and what we prioritize. Maybe what we'll prioritize more moving forward is somebody's character, is somebody's integrity. Have they been faithful to their wife? Have they been uh, uh, living a humbled life? Does their daily life win the respect of outsiders? If we start valuing those things and the person has nice taste in clothes, that doesn't matter. But if it's it, it becomes all about nice taste and clothes and it becomes all about you know, platform and audience, I think that's where we lose our, our soul in these things. And I'll give you guys a, a brief story. I went to one of these churches that Bieber would frequent. My uh, sister was at UCLA at the same time. My younger sister, I was taking her to church and we went to one of these churches. I won't tell you the name of the church, but they got up and they did this whole spiel about Jesus and the least of these in Matthew chapter 25, which is, which is really important. Matthew chapter 25 is really, really, really important. The last part of Matthew chapter 25. And then they, they like took it and like, flipped the least of these to be like celebrities and it was their spiel to go into like why you shouldn't ask to take pictures with celebrities at church like i'm like you could have just said don't take pictures with celebrities at church give them some private like, literally could have just said that but they made this big old fluff and in, in this spiel about like matthew 25 these are these and celebrities with like the least of these and we shouldn't take pictures with them and then you know what happened justin bieber hung out and it was just normal after the church service and he was just chilling, like just chilling, people walking up to him. I don't even think he has security with him that night. And so it was this weird juxtaposition that like, one, you're kind of contorting and, twi- and twisting what the least of these are and trying to make it apply to mega celebrities, while at the same time, this celebrity is like trying to be normal. They're at church because they want to be normal. Let them be normal. If you don't want people to take pictures with them, just say, hey, we don't want pe- you to take pictures with them. It's weird. It's church. Don't do that, right? At the church on the in the West has idolized people and has idolized celebrity and has idolized fame and clout and uh, high fashion, all these things, and our priorities have been off. So Two questions for you guys. Let me know in the comment section. I want to hear from you guys. Do you think there's an ax to grind with media that seemingly making these things, right? Or, or two, do you think that this is helpful for the church to evolve and grow and become better and more self-aware in terms of how we've Americanized church? That's what I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Let me know what you think, all right? Peace. King Stream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Be sure to check out some of the links in the description of this video. We have a free how to study the Bible course, and we have a free course that I put together with my Christian therapist named Dr. Rudy at MasterMyHabits.com, giving you freedom forming habits if you've been wrestling with addiction. Also, check out these videos for me and YouTube recommended to you. All right, peace.